Welcome back to the channel, and in today's video, we are tackling a very controversial anime among the Yu-Gi-Oh! fandom, Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal. Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal was the fourth series in the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise. The X in the name is silent in Japan. It's pronounced Zeal, aka Energy. We'll get into the history about the show a little later, but before we get any further, make sure to subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you never miss any updates. Now, without further ado, let's get it. Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal first aired on TV Tokyo on April 11, 2011, just two weeks after Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds ended. This show eventually ran until September 24, 2012. Unlike its predecessors, Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal was given a sequel series, Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal 2, which continued airing until March 23, 2014. During its initial airing, the reception of Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal was somewhat mixed. Some fans and critics praised the series for its fresh approach, innovative dueling mechanics, and engaging storyline, while others had reservations about certain aspects, specifically Zexal's goofier tone, lack of character development, animation style, and introduction of Xyz monsters. Unlike the original Yu-Gi-Oh!, Zexal was not actually adopted from any manga. It was solely based on a completely original material by Nihon Ad Systems and ran for 146 episodes over a total of 6 sagas. So let's get into the story. The Pre-World Dual Carnival Saga One day, a demonic gate that promises great power, but at the cost of losing your most precious possession, suddenly appears in front of Yuma Tsukumo, causing the key on his necklace to glow. Suddenly. Yuma wakes up realizing he's late for school and had another nightmare before rushing off. During a school break, Yuma witnesses Bronk losing his deck in a duel against a skilled duelist named Shark. Yuma decides to stand up for him and challenges Shark to a duel in an attempt to win back Bronk's deck. During the duel with Shark, Yuma initially struggles and faces overwhelming odds. However, the vision of the demonic gate reappears offering him more power to which Yuma accepts. A mysterious entity named Astral appears before him and offers guidance. Astral reveals himself as a duelist from another world and gifts Yuma the powerful Xyz monster, number 39, Utopia. At the same time, Shark is surrounded by a dark aura and another Xyz monster, number 17, Leviathan Dragon, is summoned to his side of the field. With Astral's assistance and the newfound power of Utopia, Yuma wins the duel, defeating Shark and reclaiming Bronk's deck. This victory marks the beginning of Yuma's journey as he starts to gain recognition and popularity among his peers. Along the way, he encounters various challenges and opponents, all while learning more about the mysterious numbers cards and the connection they have to his missing father. Astral, who suffers from amnesia, requires Yuma collect all 99 numbers cards to help him regain his memory. Wait, wait, wait. A spiritual entity capable of insane dueling? Helping the MC to defeat otherwise impossible foes and suffering from amnesia. A Tem, is that you, my boy? I'm playing, I'm playing. They also have scouters. Wait, a curatory. I'm playing, for real this time. During his search for the numbers, Yuma encounters Kite Tenjo, a self-proclaimed numbers hunter who is looking to collect all of the numbers cards for himself. During their duel, Yuma learns that Kite not only takes the loser's number card, but also steals their soul in the process. Just before being defeated by Kite's ace monster, Galaxy Eye's Photon Dragon, Kite abruptly cancels the duel to attend to his sick younger brother. After some extensive training, Yuma and Astral gain the ability to Chaos Exceed Summon number C39, Utopia Ray, and learn more about Yuma's necklace called the Emperor's Key, potentially being a clue to the origin of the number. The key is then stolen by Kite, who duels them, leading Yuma and Astral to overlay their souls and obtain the power of Zexal, ending their duel with Kite in a draw and getting their key back. The next day, Kite invades Astral's memories and tells him that they will settle their score in the World Duel Carnival preliminaries. Number 2. The World Duel Carnival's Preliminary Saga A few days before the tournament, Yuma realizes he forgot to register but manages to get a heart piece from Mr. Heartland, the mayor of Heartland City. He defeats many opponents, collecting more heart pieces along the way. Eventually, Yuma teams up with Kite to find his younger brother, Heart Tenjo, 
who is kidnapped by Quattro Arclight and faces off against him and his brother Trey in a tag duel. After the pair are defeated by Yuma and Kite, Yuma learns that his father is still alive and stuck in Astral World, deciding to win the World Duel Carnival to save his friends and father. Skipping ahead, Yuma encounters Trey Arclight, who uses his crest powers, a sacred ability passed down by his family, to erase Yuma's memories and weaken him. With help from his father's teachings, Yuma regains his abilities and learns that Trey destroyed Astral and becomes determined to revive him. Trey, having a change of heart, ends up helping to revive Astral and Yuma defeats Trey in the process. Yuma then collects Trey's numbers cards and a heart piece and Trey asks Yuma to save his family allowing Yuma to advance to the WDC Finals. Number 3, The World Duel Carnival Final Saga At the tournament finals party, Yuma encounters Vetrix. Vetrix declares that he will meet Yuma in the finals and realizes this is the person Trey had received his powers from. On the morning of the finals, he gathers his heart pieces with the help of his sister and friends. Yuma encounters and defeats the Triad of Terra with Anna and Nistro's assistance reducing his life points to 600. He navigates traps, saves Nistro, and unintentionally enters the duel field where Vetrix defeated Dextra. Yuma vows to duel Vetrix for Dextra's sake. Yuma follows Orbital 7, Kite's robot, to Kite, who is dueling Quentin, and relays Dextra's message, but is disappointed by Kite's lack of concern. Quentin reveals that five years ago, Kite and Hart's father, Dr. Faker, was working on an experiment to open a door to another dimension sacrificing two of his partners to do so. Those partners were none other than Yuma's father, Kazuma, and Quentin's father, Byron Arclight, who somehow returned in the body of a child, assuming the identity of Vetrix. Hearing this, Yuma is determined to stop Vetrix and Dr. Faker. He encounters Shark and Quattro's duel, and while trying to save Shark, Vetrix restrains him with chains. Yuma refuses Vetrix's attempts to incite revenge on Dr. Faker. Shark defeats Quattro, and Yuma vows to carry on Shark's will. Yuma faces Nistro in the duel fields, initially playing defensively, but ultimately betting everything on the duel and defeating Nistro. He celebrates with his friends and family, but panics when he realizes his deck is missing. Yuma infiltrates Heartland Tower, retrieves his deck, visits Heart in a comatose state, and blames himself for everything that's happened. He learns Faker's true goal is to rule Earth and returns to the semifinals to face Shark. Yuma brings Shark back to his senses and wins the duel. He becomes concerned for Kite during his duel with Vetrix, but fails to reach him in time. Yuma then learns Vetrix made his sons Trey, Quattro, and Quentin exchange their souls for their families for their crest powers and promises to save Vetrix's family. The final duel between Yuma and Vetrix begins as they summon powerful numbers to the field. In a high-stakes duel, Yuma and Vetrix clash with their powerful numbers monsters, driven by their respective goals. Yuma is resolute in his mission to save Vetrix's family and thwart Dr. Faker's destructive plan. With the support of his friends and the memories they share, Yuma taps into the strength of his bonds, strategizing and executing impressive plays. The duel reaches a critical point as both duelists refuse to yield. With the fate of Vetrix's family hanging in the balance, Yuma last minute secures the victory. Yuma extends an offer of friendship to Vetrix, who accepts, moved by Yuma's belief in second chances. With the threat neutralized, Yuma, Kite, and Shark face off against Dr. Faker in a final duel, where he reveals that a being from another dimension known as the Barian World was the real mastermind behind his plan. The Barian then emerges from the portal and possesses Dr. Faker, continuing the duel but eventually is beaten by Yuma. Thus leading to the Force Saga and the beginning of Yu-Gi-Oh's Exile 2, the Baryan Invasion Saga. After the World Duel Carnival, a new duelist named Rei joins the crew and befriends Yuma. Yuma and the gang face off against a number of different duelists who are possessed by the Baryans. Yuma eventually learns that Rei is a member of the Baryan Cosmic Crime Unit. Yuma keeps this a secret and agrees to work with Rei to defeat the evil Baryans. Eventually, Yuma receives an urgent call and discovers that his friend has been dueling a Baryan named Vector. Vector attacks Yuma and his friends, trapping Yuma in a sphere field. Yuma and Astral learn that Vector is the same Baryan who possessed Dr. Faker and engage in a duel against him. 
Despite facing challenges, Yuma manages to win with the support of Rei. However, Vector captures Rei, leaving Yuma devastated. Yuma shares the situation with Kite and Shark, and they plan to save Rei using an airship. Yuma's family notice his unusual behavior, but support his decision. Yuma remains determined to rescue Rei as they board an airship, but face an attack from monsters and are pulled into a portal. In the different dimension battlefield, Yuma confronts Vector, who implies that Rei may be dead. This devastates Yuma, and he duels Vector recklessly, summoning powerful monsters. Vector reveals that he is in fact Rei, and Rei never existed all along causing Yuma to become enraged. Yuma's friends encourage him and he refuses to give up. A black hole threatens their spaceship and Vector offers a choice. Save Astral by giving up his numbers or die. And Yuma enters a state of dark Zexel, but eventually breaks free. Yuma and Astral reconcile and Yuma defends himself against Vector's attacks. They overlay their souls and use the power of Zexel 2 to defeat Vector, returning to Heartland City. Number five. The Mithrian Numbers War Saga. After being defeated by Yuma and Astral, Vector journeyed to the Great Barian Sea, where Dawn Thousand, the Barian world god, was sealed and released him. He offered Dawn Thousand his life in exchange for the power to defeat Yuma and Astral. Thousand told him to journey to Earth and find the seven sealed Mithrian Numbers, which would fully revive Dawn Thousand. Vector agreed and Thousand merged with him, empowering Vector with new abilities and restoring his injured body. Using Thousand's powers, Vector accelerated the healing of Garag and Alito. Elsewhere, Astral appears and informs Yuma and the gang about the scattered Mithrian numbers and the need to obtain the seven Mithrian numbers cards before the Barian world does. This leads the group on a world tour where they go all over the globe defeating various Barians and collecting more numbers, leading to the revelation that the Barians were also once human. After this, they face Dumon, Abyss, and Astral's evil counterpart, number 96, an intense duel, with Yuma and Astral using their combined power of Zexel 2 to defeat number 96. However, Astral sacrifices himself to protect Yuma, leaving Yuma in tears. Yuma refuses to accept Astral's loss and sets off to search for him in the Astral Dimension with the help of Quentin and Kite. In Astral World, Yuma encounters Eliphas. Eliphas is the embodiment of Astral World's will and duels Yuma to decide Astral's fate. Yuma defeats him, restoring Astral, and returns to Earth where he defeats Mr. Heartland in a duel using their new Zexel 3 power, saving his friends in the process. However, a burst of light appears before them, leading to the final Barian Emperor Onslaught Saga. Yuma and his friends are suddenly confronted by the seven Barian Emperors, who reveal that Shark and Ryo have been reincarnated as Barians. Yuma refuses to accept that they are enemies and wants to revive their bonds through dueling. However, the Barians attack Yuma, but he is saved by Roku and Kaze. Yuma regains consciousness and learns about the deaths of his friends. He decides to defeat Don Thousand to restore everything to normal. Trey and Quentin decide to avenge Quattro's death instead of joining Yuma leading to an argument. Yuma sets off with Tori and Nastral on the different dimension airship. Ultimately, Yuma feels guilty for not saving his friends and witnesses Trey and Quentin being defeated and taken to the Barian world. Alito attacks the airship, forcing Yuma to duel him to free Tori. Yuma manages to save Alito from Don Thousand's influence. Garag then attacks the airship and Yuma tries to reason with him but fails. Alito then sacrifices himself to save Yuma from Vector's attack and Yuma learns about Kite's duel with Mazar and witnesses Kite's defeat. Yuma arrives in the Barian world and witnesses the duel between Nash and Vector. Vector is absorbed by Don Thousand and Yuma tries to save him but fails. Mazar gives Yuma number 100, Numeron Dragon, and confirms Kite's death. Yuma and his friends face Don Thousand in a battle royale. Yuma and Nash then struggle against Thousand's powerful monsters but receive help from Astral and Eliphas. Yuma's determination strengthens, and he manages to turn the tide of the duel. Kite's spirit appears before them, encouraging him to win. Yuma, in a clutch move, Yuma summons Numeron Dragon and faces Don Thousand's ultimate monster. With the support of his fallen friends, Yuma refuses to give up and manages to overpower Don Thousand. Despite his loss, Don Thousand's soul was transferred to Nash with all the numbers along with him. Nash infused with Don Thousand's energy, forces Yuma and Astral out of the Zexel 3 fusion, and warns them about the imminent collision with Astral World. Nash, still considering himself their enemy, 
challenges them to a duel to decide the fate of all three worlds. Yuma tries to reason with Nash and find a way for both worlds to coexist, but Nash believes it's impossible. They engage in a fierce duel, and Nash summons powerful monsters to gain the upper hand. However, Yuma and Astral manage to stage a comeback and defeat Nash, who admits that Yuma and Astral were his best friends. Afterward, Yuma reunites with his friends and is informed that Astral plans to destroy the Baryan world. Yuma disagrees and challenges Astral to a duel to change his mind. They duel with great intensity, but ultimately, Yuma wins, leading to a heartfelt farewell between Yuma and Astral. After Astral's departure, Yuma resumed his ordinary life. His parents returned to Earth, and the seven Baryan emperors were revived as humans. Yuma reflected on the events since Astral's departure, and the Tenjo and Arclight families began working together again to study parallel worlds. Despite enjoying the newfound peace, Yuma still longed for Astral and felt that things were not the same without him. Suddenly, one evening, Yuma's emperor's key starts glowing, and Shark and Kite inform Yuma about a new threat in the Astral world. Energized, Yuma looks forward to reuniting with Astral again. And that is the end of Yu-Gi-Oh's Exile. Thanks for watching, y'all. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and slap the bell icon so you never miss another video. Until next time, peace.